Welcome back, friends. Um, tonight, I want to try and work on this GBASP a little bit more. Uh, you've probably seen this one in quite a few videos of mine, including most recently when I embarrassed myself by destroying the original LCD in this and putting in a new lens. But as of this moment, like every other time I've been tweaking this with this thing, uh, it works perfectly fine. It has a few little issues that could use a little bit of improvement. And uh, so that's what I'm going to work on tonight. When I originally bought this thing, it had some water damage, audio wasn't working, etc. I think I did a video on this, but I don't think I included this in the video itself. Um, I ended up having to replace the original volume potentiometer on it because it was water damaged. And at the time, I didn't have any replacement SP potentiometers. And as far as I can tell, there aren't any replacement potentiometers that are a drop-in fit, um, but I haven't looked very hard, to be honest. Um, I did end up cramming this thing in here, and as you can tell from the fact that there's no audio at this very moment, it's not the best potentiometer. This potentiometer in particular is salvaged out of a Game Boy Color, and it does work perfectly fine except all the way up. Uh, the pen potentiometer itself is just a little bit crusty. On any other console, I would just replace the potentiometer, call it a day. Um, but because this SP isn't even using the correct potentiometer, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, what I did, I went and found these on AliExpress. These are just replacement potentiometers. I haven't tested this one in particular, but hopefully it works just fine. Specs look right. And I made some PCBs, so maybe I won't have to wire this up. Uh, I did fuck up the PCBs a little bit. Let me get another potentiometer out of here. I don't know why I didn't check this before I had the PCBs made. I figured, oh, there's no way I'll mess it up. And then, of course, I messed it up. Uh, the contacts don't quite line up. I measured the diameter for four of them or something. I don't know. Um, but if you line up the middle one top and the bottom contact don't quite line up. I think I think I got the spacing right. I think I just accidentally made the contacts too wide and I, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, on this one I just bent them and they'll be close enough. It'll work in this case, but for future ones I'll try and do better. No, stay. My cat's trying to join me on the desk. I think he's going to sit there. That's okay. There's just not enough room on my desk for the cat and for this Game Boy. Anyway, as is tradition, I'm going to go ahead and take apart this Game Boy again. I joked like the first time I took this, or the second time I took this thing apart, this is like the most I've ever, most, most frequent console that I take apart or something, I don't know. That hasn't changed. So as is usual with PCBs from Oshpark, they come with these little tabs on there. I did already go ahead and file them off on this one here, so I'm going to use that one. Fire up the soldering iron. And so this is what I did to get that potentiometer working. It's There's a mess of wires. Not all of these wires are hooking this potentiometer up, but it's pretty much just held down with hot glue. So I'm thinking we should be able to get it out of here relatively non-destructively. There's also some double-sided tape that I tried using initially, but that didn't hold well enough, so that's when I opted for the hot glue. Oh god, what is he doing? Okay. Never mind. We're good. Okay, so that came out pretty easily. Let me grab some tweezers. 
peel the rest of this up. I put down some Captain tape to insulate it, and as it turns out, that was a tremendously good idea because everything came out super easily. Except for this little bit of hot glue at the edge. Probably be smart to take this thing out of the case, but nah. Okay. So when I made this PCB adapter, I didn't quite take into account the fact that this. Game Boy had some bodge wires, so I might need to reroute one of these wires here. I also used some liquid electrical tape to try and help with the insulation, so I need to rip that up before I can move this wire. Luckily comes up pretty easily. Good stuff for this purpose. Okay. There might just be enough slack on this. There we go. Or I could just put it above the PCB. That would work too. That'll go. Oh, another thing I didn't consider. There's a little resistor there. Where is that resistor? A capacitor. No, it's a resistor. Okay. We'll make it work. Shame, though. That's okay. I have an idea. We're going to put it under the PCB. I'm literally just going to file a notch in this thing. So that's going to go like that. I'm going to file a notch right about there. There's nothing in the PCB that I can ruin by cutting right here. So I'm not too concerned. I am, however, going to go pause the video while I do this, because I have a feeling it's going to take me a while. So I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I got it all cleaned up here. Um, I said I was going to file it, and then I ended up using my uh, rotary tool. I, I just shaved out a big chunk on the underside there. No big deal. You can practically see the traces on the front through the back now, but... Whatever, it should still work. I hope. But it does fit quite nicely now, even over that resistor. I was hoping it wouldn't need a mod like that. And, you know, maybe it's still, maybe the final one won't if I get the spacing proper. But, I don't know. We'll see. I gotta go ahead and flatten out these. I'm gonna use desoldering braid. Because I want to be able to get this PCB on completely flat. And this will go in here just like that. All six of these contacts should line up, and it looks like they do. Oh, shit. My, uh... That was really dumb. My solder holder next to my computer. And if you just heard what happened, that was my computer restarting because I bumped the power switch when I grabbed it. Oopsie doodle. Oh, 
Oh well, I'm sure it's fine. going entirely too smoothly. Oh wait, never mind. I had to I already had to bend the contacts and file out that spot. I think we should be good. Okay. Next, um, I guess we'll run this wire over this PCB. For now, probably I'll just desolder it. Worry about it later. All right, and this thing, this does not get soldered on on top. It gets soldered on upside down and then folded over. So, oi, what are you doing? Okay, we're good. He's not doing anything he shouldn't be doing. I'm going to bend these again. So they're at approximately 90 degrees. Should solder down like that. Before I solder this down, though, I do got to clip off these last legs here. I would love to keep them, but unfortunately, there's just seriously no room. Just like I would have loved to not have to fold these over, but. That wasn't happening either. Definitely got to fix the spacing on this. But I think we should be good to go. And this should just fold down. this wire but oh it's just a hair too short that's frustrating
I'll have to rerun this wire at some point. I'm sure that running this so close to the RAM like that is absolutely no, there's absolutely no danger of shorting. Definitely. I'm not just going to leave it uninsulated. And again, this bodge wire is literally only because this console has water damage, or had water damage, I suppose. This wire was part of my fix for that. Not perfect, but good enough. And if all goes well, I shouldn't even have to do any other mods. It should just fit. And by the way, I did originally have to cut just a hair out of the inside shell here, or the back of the wheel would, would rub. And I did design this mod so that the positioning would be the same. Though how I got that right and managed to fuck up the uh, spacing, I'll never know. But it does look like it's actually a little bit further out than originally planned. Oh yeah, it's entirely too far out. I can't even turn it. I should have tested that before I put the shell on. Stop trying to get on my desk. Oh, now he's going to go pout. Oh, word of warning, do not try and unbend that. You'll rip pads up on the PCB. Oof. Well, nonetheless, let's try it out. If I can get the positioning better.
Sounds like it works. Much better. I would call that a success. Just got to do a little bit of work on the spacing of the pads. And we're good to go. Instead of moving that, I think I'm just going to leave the volume down so that I can still use this SP uh, in public without annoying everyone. As adults do, they respect other people's boundaries. I'll just get some new PCBs made. We'll test that out next time. And we'll go from there. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Have a good night.